Hello there future educators, I hope you are all doing just fine because for today's video, we are now going to proceed with our new topic. I hope that the previous discussions had helped you to fully understand different learning models in pursuing technology-driven teaching as well as learning. Now, for the last topic in this module, we're gonna talk about the last learning model that will surely enable you to integrate technological tools and applications in creating and planning effective and creative lessons. So without further ado, let's begin. Again. So without further ado, let's begin. Again, this is me, Sir Earl Marvin Batan from QAB Set Filipino. Happy learning! They say that a well-planned lesson is half the battle won. The other half is the delivery of the lesson by the facilitator who has the pedagogical skills to implement what has been planned. This will ensure that learning outcomes are met. Moreover, this will also motivate students to meet the expected standards. As a result, it is essential that elements needed to be incorporated when designing a plan should be well plotted before teaching. According to Heinrich and Smaldino of 2002, all teachers are required to make an effective lesson plan to ensure the achievement of learning outcomes. With this, it will engage learners to perform expected standards that would enhance their knowledge and skills. So in designing a lesson with the integration of technology, it is crucial to observe a framework that can act as a guide in its formulation. One framework to exemplify best this thought is through analyzing a sure model. But what is a sure model? A sure model is a guide for creating an instructional flow that can assist teachers in incorporating appropriate technology and media into the instructional process. It also refers to a systematic approach that the teacher can employ when developing the instructional plan. In addition, the Assure model is an instructional design model designed to enhance the effectiveness of teaching and learning. This model is made up of six essential steps in instructional planning. The first step we need to know is to analyze our learners. With the learners at the center of the instructional process, the first step is to understand the learners' learning styles, age level, interests or preferences, backgrounds, special needs, and cultural diversity. Through this, we will be able to have a better understanding of our learners' need and provide specific supplications towards it in order for the learners and us to have a good rapport. The second step is to state our objectives. This talks about the primary instruction guide that will direct the flow of our desired target in a specific lesson. This statement is also known as the expected learning outcome of the lesson, which describes what the learners will be able to do as a result of the instruction. However, we should keep in mind that in creating our learning objectives, we must consider the actual capacity of our students. This must be not too easy to attain and not too hard to achieve. Remember that our students have their different cognitive level of thinking as well as learning strategies. The third step is all about selecting methods, media, and materials. In selecting method of delivering the lesson, utilizing the appropriate media or technology can effectively help learners gain understanding of the lesson or gain the desired competence. Keep in mind that different lessons needs different approaches and not all digital tools are effective to all subject matter. So, in selecting our methods, we must consider if the tool is appropriate to our topic or lesson so that we will be able to maximize its potential help to deliver our lessons effectively creative. The next step is utilizing technology, media, and materials. It is essential to preview or use media and materials before your lesson, especially if you are using technology, to ensure that everything works properly. We do this to avoid delays in our lesson or even during discussions, for it may take much of our time. That is why, before we proceed in teaching, double-check the tools, applications, and devices that we are going to use. 
The fifth step is about requiring learners' participation. Requiring students to participate actively in the lesson will not just engage them, but will also help them to retain what they are learning. Incorporating cooperative learning structures, questioning, having discussions, creating fun hand-on activities, games, and so on are some ways to accomplish this. The sixth and last step is evaluating and revising. Throughout the lesson, learners' performance can be evaluated and it must be noted. However, the basic rule is that the evaluation should be congruent with the learning outcome provided in the lesson. Some learning outcomes can be adequately evaluated using a pen and paper test, but others can be assessed using a rubric or having an aggregate write-up through the use of a portfolio assessment which is appropriate for the purpose of evaluative activity is determined by the teacher. That's it! We are done with our discussion. I hope that you have learned something new again. Remember, any tool and theoretical model might help us in delivering our lessons, but it is solely in us, the teachers, depends the whole learning process to be effective, fruitful, and creative. Thank you again, future teachers. Thank you.